Hi friends and family. Hi loved ones. Hey fools. How y'all doing? So it's time to share a little more and care. Express that care. That's what's been on my mind lately is what that actually means. And it is actually kind of awesome because yesterday I did open my Sacred Art of Listening book and it had been a while since I'd done that. And um, so it's just like, yeah, I just kept getting nudges. Just listen. Just be silent and listen. Go within and listen. And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. That's always good to do. <laughs> Take time to listen. Slow down. So turtle medicine, I've been um, working with turtle and like really consciously making an effort to slow down and to be here even when it's just with myself because yeah, sometimes when there's so much stimulation um, coming from, yeah, being with others and whatnot, it's a little harder for me to do sometimes to separate, um, differentiate and things. And that is like <laughs> one pattern that I'm dissolving is like absorbing and taking on everything from the other that I'm with. And that's been kind of difficult and challenging for me to like learn how to do without like knowing how to do in certain ways. Um, but I do know it's because like I am so sensitive and I am so empathic and it's just part of my blueprint and what I'm here to learn too. Like I'm really freaking super sensitive and I always have been. I feel what others feel and like it does either, it can have like a, a beneficial uh, impact or it can have a, yeah, not so beneficial impact on like, yeah, on me, if I take on other people's stuff and other people's toxicities and um, what they want of me and, like, all of that kind of stuff. And so it has been a little challenging, like, not knowing how, like, to separate without, like, being defensive or having a wall or, yeah, shutting down a part of myself or being more aggressive or whatnot, like to defend myself. Not that it's wrong to defend myself, but if I'm with a loved one and maybe I want to create a container for authentic and safe sharing, like coming from a place of defensiveness doesn't actually contribute to that. And so, yeah, it's been a little tricky and I've had some practice and there's been some pop quizzes that have come up for me this week. And yeah, sometimes it's only through like reviewing um, what happened, how I was feeling, like processing in a way, like when I'm on my own that I can actually see the dynamics that were at play or how I might have emotionally reacted and gotten my own way. And so, yeah, I like to kind of look at those things and say, okay, like, what happened here and how can I choose something else or how can I do better or how can I work with that more and play with that more um, to course correct and all of that. But it is because I care. You know, if I didn't care, like, I'd just say, fuck it. And, um, but I do, and so this is important to me, and it feels like I'm give, being given an opportunity. So I am willing to work through this and love myself through this and everything. Yeah. All these lessons and to help me integrate and to help me surrender and to help me trust myself and to help me be sovereign and to become who I really am and fulfill and show up for my mission here. And yeah, that's what I'm intending and attending to and choosing for myself and for my well-being. And because of, yeah, for all those that I love and care for and for myself. 
So um, I opened my book the other day, and it was uh, chapter 18, Love in Action, Listening is Caring. And I'll just read you the first part of that. Caring is an aspect of love that can be seen in several forms across a broad spectrum from the personal, caring for myself, to the universal, caring for all creation. But our everyday language often works against our best motives as we strive to care. We so often use the word caring as an act of disengagement, like I couldn't care less, or I don't care, or in the current slang, whatever. So we practice the sacred art of listening by looking for occasions to care. This can be challenging, even inconvenient. A dear friend of mine manages a business and I had an opportunity to use her services. The work was completed, but the service I received did not fulfill my expectations. Since I value our friendship, I thought long and hard about what to do. Eventually, I wrote a long letter describing my experience honestly and the deep sense of how much I care for her. I cared enough about her and our relationship to say things even though they were difficult to say. It worked. She did not respond with defensiveness, as we all so often do. She could see that I was caring for her. So it is a demonstration of love and action. Caring for each other can be a physical, tangible reminder to those whom we listen to, confirming that we hear them. It is a demonstration of love and action. So, yeah, a demonstration to show that we care. So it is action, showing up and, um, yeah, taking action, show that we care and yeah, sometimes we don't know what to do. We do care, but we want someone else to take care of it for us. Yeah, because we don't trust ourselves sometimes and we think someone else knows better. But yeah, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing to realize. But um, I've been reading stories last time and talked about Odysseus and his and the human adventure and his yeah some of his adventures some of his travels and the, the land of forgetting and yeah the sabotage and trickery and then the curse that uh, Polyphemus uh, laid on him because he told him his real name it stuck and <laughs> that curse stuck to him and I thought that was kind of funny but yeah, I've been examining and looking at and exploring and looking into some of these stories and I've just been writing and I've been working with my feelings of frustration and disappointment coming up and I've been working with the energies um, that are available and accessible, paying attention to what is available and um, being grateful for what I do have and what I do hold and what is available and what is coming and what is being manifested and what is healing and what is being integrated and focusing on all that of course but of course like there is like some residual layers of stuff coming up and it is sometimes I yeah getting impatient with it because it feels like man I'm not done with this yet but like um, it's just more of the process and like yeah what I get to allow to unfold like through showing up for it and for myself and for my healing because that's what I can choose for me and that's what I choose um, to show love and care for me and my life and my well-being and the love that's been given to me like that's <laughs> yeah that's the only thing I really can change is my own mind and my own story and like transforming my old beliefs my old limitations and my old ways of thinking and operating and that's what I've been working on for you know the last uh, five years or so but yeah this is just another part of the journey and a part of the individuation process that I get to, yeah, choose to care for and to attend to for myself and for my well-being 
I'm for what I'm here to do, for what I'm here to share. So I'll offer it as a love offering and rather than a sermon <laughs> because that archetype's been coming up for me the last couple weeks, the preacher and my sermons. <laughs> but that's okay too. Like <laughs> I'm okay with that. And I'm just looking at like some of the stories that uh, I've been blessed to receive and um, dig into to gather like the threads that I need to weave into my tapestry for wholeness and healing for me and for we. And it's, it's been really interesting and I super have enjoyed the stories and these myths that I haven't been as familiar with. And I actually did go back yesterday and read the tale of the handless maiden that was in Women Who Run With the Wolves in um, yeah, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And I just, it was all I could do not to slow down because, oh, it was just like honey, like this, this story, it was just nectar and it was just like, so it was just, wow, where's the story been all my life? And I, it was just nourishment and, oh, I could, I just, it's hard, so hard to describe, but oh my gosh, just, and her breakdown of it, uh, just blew my mind. So I, I, I might need to share a little bit of that story with you at the end. But there are like several things that relate and can go along with <laughs> all of this, um, with what I'm working on. And so I'm going to try and integrate and um, gather all these threads and <laughs> weave them into some kind of coherent <laughs> fabric. <laughs> so as best I can. Yeah, because there is a lot. Um, of gold. And so I'll just begin. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for caring. Thanks for letting me share with you. I hope it serves and I hope it helps in your process of becoming you, becoming more true, becoming, yeah, more of you. And so I'm looking at the handless maiden and Kuan Yin, goddess of compassion, is coming up. This is a good time for mantras and like those solves that they can be like soothing for our soul and for our heart and for our minds. So mantras and compassions and compassion and affirmations and, and speaking our truth and freeing our voice um, for the divine voice. So Hathor, the beloved mother and Mat, goddess of truth, Sekhmet, um, Goddess of Protection, Isis. Yeah, Great Mother, Goddess of All. Mary, Mother, Jesus, and Horus. Initiations and Activations. Purification, Illumination, Integration, Assimilation, Transformation, and Penetration. Reunion. Odysseus in his travels, adventures, and mishaps, trials and errors, disrespect and callousness, arrogance, ego boners, He's full of shit, the fucking wit, the clever wit, the half fuck wit, the little kid that doesn't know his own limits. He uses his own rope, his own power, to hang and condemn himself, getting lost in a giant big head. Chords of the ego dissolving and repatterning, repatterning on the way out. So yeah, it's uncomfortable to shed this old skin sometimes, but it's like, yeah harder to avoid it now I just have to like confront it and address it I get to or else I'm creating more pain for myself and so yeah and that's what Aries can teach as well is like um, facing challenges head-on so I'm grateful to receive that from the Ram that those messages and qualities and wisdom from the Ram uh, facing challenges head-on so I choose wholeness instead, healing, fullness, wellness, balance, union, self-love, self-respect. Where have I bound myself in a box or in old beliefs or stories, attachments, memories, identities, lenses, roles, or agreements, false images, or old ways of thinking? And yeah, it's like, where, where have I bound myself? Like, where am I shortchanging or, sh yeah, myself? Where am I limiting myself? 
where can I open and soften in my own self? And, uh, yeah, just kind of looking at those things and questioning, you know, asking the right kind questions. And um, also looking at, like, this astrology, that we're still in that new moon window. It was on the 13th, and there's three days before, and there's three days after. Where we're in this window, so it's considered like as a portal, an energetic portal that we can like work with and um, access and harness some of those energies uh, to integrate and to free and to liberate ourselves. Or we can go deeper into our illusions and become more delusional and cling yeah, to the known and cling to our comfort zones. And so, yeah, it was like some energy, like with Pisces, you know, like there's the light side and then there's the shadow side. And like, I'm a moon in Pisces and that's part of my sensitivity and why I'm so empathic and, and dreamy and yeah, all those things. And I like the depths, you know, I like to go deep, but yeah, there are certain depths I've been afraid to go. I've been afraid to be. And it's and it hasn't been easy for me just to be like just to be me because I felt like there was so much wrong with me because I was picking up like everybody else's garbage around me too and and I thought it was mine and also this that ego need that survival strategy to um, secure a sense of lovability and a sense of belonging and a sense of validation or approval. Uh, to secure like my place in the whole and that's like been the hardest part for me to let go of and then and, and I have been so angry with others for giving away their power for that same for those same reasons and um, like yeah that ego control but then it's then and it controls us you know and so, yeah, we're our own worst tyrants sometimes when we let our ego take control. And so, yeah, just looking at some of those things and like some of these stories and how they relate. And I realized that, yeah, it's okay to trust and let go. And I'm still working with that, um, working through this, I'm working through that. And realize that it is about feeling safe and that we haven't felt safe and that we have been in a lot of fear and that helps me to have compassion um, for, like, you know, other people's unconscious choices in securing, you know, their place. Or maybe, like, the ego preservation, I can understand it a little bit better or have more compassion for it because I can have compassion for mine instead of getting so frustrated and impatient with myself for not, like, already like being done with this or feeling fine about it I guess like and it's okay the way that it is right now it is just it has felt like a struggle and yeah trying to reconcile like what now you know like being between those life cycles of life death and rebirth and just like letting go and surrendering to now, to this moment of now, and to what is now, and to how I feel, and to what I need, like to what my soul is asking me, and just to be with me, and just to be one at peace within myself, within me. And so that's what my focus is on, is changing my mind and loving me being all my love for all of me because that's really the gift that's been given to me so that I can discover and I can be and I can create and become <laughs> more of me more of who I really am my love for all of me and so just doing some affirmations and things like realizing oh yeah I don't feel safe in certain ways because I'm afraid of like what uh, someone might think or um, yeah like what might put me into exile or put me into that black sheep 
uh, role again or yeah and I guess you just get to embrace that I am that I am that I am that I am and however it gets to be that like whatever role I get to play it being I still am all I am and so yeah just kind of taking it one step and one moment and yeah one breath at a time mm -hmm. letting go to relax and unwind and release myself from the binds of my mind and so the dragons were coming up dragons been coming up a lot and the phoenix and so like the fire the fires of transformation and the baptism by fire and the, the trials by fire and all of that and in several times and like in just different places and yeah I know it's no accident but yeah these messages are coming through for me like to work with and to play with and to help me through my alchemy yeah. the dragons the dragon rider the dragon slayer and the dragon fire the fires of transformation and change fire <laughs> and dancing in the flames Slow down, pace and ready yourself, ground yourself, or risk burnout. It's okay to just let go and trust all of this. Trust the whole process. It's okay to trust myself. It's okay to trust the universe. It's okay to trust Mother Earth. It's okay to trust God and Goddess. It's okay to trust love. It's okay to trust myself. It's okay to trust nature. It's okay to trust others. It's okay to trust life. It's okay to trust change. It's okay to trust death. It's okay to trust birth. It's okay to trust growth. It's okay to trust. It's okay to be here. It's okay to make a mess. It's okay to be here. Just let go and go and be in the flow. <laughs> be in the flow of this moment right here. <laughs> let go. So just working with disappointments and frustrations and um, that's, yeah, part of my idealist, my romantic, my lover. Yeah. Allow others to walk their own path, even if it causes me sadness and disappointment. If I love them, let them go and bless them on their way. Wish them goodwill and good fortune, well wishes, good lessons, expansion, abundance, comfort, healing, remembrance on their way. Clear vision and a clear path, a safe return home and an occasional nap because man sometimes <laughs> our inner child really needs a nap yeah our body yeah needs rest sometimes and like just going through all these different changes and kind of yeah experiencing different levels of stress and just instead of like distracting ourselves or band you know putting a band-aid on or manipulating how we feel or suppressing how we feel or whatever that is, just kind of be with it, be with, be with where we are and with what we feel, and um, come home to ourselves and just hold that, uh, hold that container, that space for us to be met, to be met with love, and to bring in, call in the observer, call in the neutral witness, yeah, to. To observe and not get sucked into the feelings or the stories um, or the ego attachments but just to allow the expression and the expression the releasing of what is ready to be released and um, to let go of it and to allow it to be known or to be seen or to be illuminated and understood, transformed and transmuted. So of course humor helps lighten all the hell up. <laughs> humor helps lighten the hell up. So I started writing a little story just for fun and yeah it's just the beginnings of something that could be kind of fun. So um once upon a time far, far away in the land of, or in the kingdom of Cornholio, there was an epic adventure waiting to unfold. And I won't read you the next couple lines because it's a work in progress, but yeah, that's just something I did um, for fun. Just like, just do something new, do something creative. Like I feel like I've been rehashing the same things over and over again, but like 
yeah, it is coming up for me, like, really, so I can get out of my own way in certain ways. And so, like, yeah, I have, like, channeled and directed, um, like, that huge, like, and released and integrated, like, the inner rage that I felt um, last year. I have done a lot of work with that, and I can, yeah, I definitely see the progress and what has been created and what has been manifested and what I have been able to integrate because of being willing to show up for and through all that. But yeah, this last part, like I was saying in a couple months ago, just with uh, the, d the disappointments and the frustrations, sometimes they feel a little bit more difficult uh, to know what to do with them than the rage did. Like, wow, I don't know why that is. It's just interesting. But um, yeah, that's just what it is. Like for me, that's how it feels right now. So just, yeah, dealing with the disappointments and the sorrows, frustration, blame and anger. I, ha I feel like I have very low tolerance for lies, bullshit, self-pity, woes, entitled uh, attitudes and complaints, judgments, pettiness, passive-aggressive dynamics, avoidance, and pretending, the inauthentic, virtuous victim, or the covert, fragile narcissist. So I write, I, I, I wrote out, I am not a victim. I am a victorious soul. I am a beloved child of earth and heaven. I am a beloved bride of God. I am an eternal soul living on the land here upon earth. I am a beloved. I am beloved. I am that I am. Letting go, I observe. I release. Letting go. And what I noticed on Saturday was some interesting energies coming up. And that was the 13th uh, for the new moon. And um, for some reason, yeah, like I was just kind of getting some feelings and like stories like stories of hostility and confrontation and telling someone off just telling them off to bring them down or telling them off just yeah maybe even so that I felt superior or that I felt self-righteous or right or worthy or enough and so really like I was just kind of yeah I was driving or riding in the car with my husband and uh, just noticing like these stories that were popping up and like yeah they related to worries and anxieties that I had and so I'm like oh okay so it's like do I really want a confrontation like a big blowout confrontation and I was like no I really don't but like the stories in my head that were coming along like there's a part of me that really did want a confrontation and wanted to yeah just tell it like it is and yeah that finger wagging no nonsense like mother that's gonna just tell you straight what the fuck you're doing you know and so it was just kind of like okay let's look at that it's like that's interesting okay like it was just like totally had like this charge to it and almost carried me away and then I remembered to recenter and breathe. And it's like, okay, I choose peace. But thank you for showing me, like, that there's something that I get to confront. There's something that needs to be confronted. And so uh, part of me wants to have a confrontation. So what do I need or get to confront or address or and attend to to care for? There's no need to defend or prove anything. What is love asking me to see? to choose, claim, or show care for, for me and we, love offerings. Letting go and starting something new, um, a salve, a balm, an invocations, affirmations, mantras, the word, song, joy, grief, love, growth, truth, prayers, blessings for healing and forgiving, being true to me. So there's some messages there like that, yeah, that was just telling me, okay, just start something new. Um, create something new and then yeah I can I can create my own self and my invocations I can invite in what I need for me and um, I can affirm you know my love for me and I can remind myself through like the words that I speak through the mantras that I choose to speak through honoring my word being impeccable with my word being as true to my word as I can aligning my word with 
what I really want with who I who I really am with the love I really am and like sing it out express it and and it is joy I mean because it's not all it's not all terrible it's not all bad and it's not it I mean because there's so much beauty and so many gifts but allow myself the joy and the grief and the growth <laughs> and yeah invite my own truth to speak and, and yeah offer prayers and blessings prayers for myself and for my loved ones and for all of our healing for healing and forgiving so it's like that message again this is forgiving it's a gift for giving and so yeah maybe forgive and be yeah more true to me just let it go and be true to me so yeah I did get to um, go and see my um, my dad <laughs> and my stepmom on Saturday I hadn't seen them for a while it'd been quite a while and I have felt wounded and exiled and rejected from yeah from the family because I'm not going along with certain programs and certain beliefs and um, that are not right for me and they are not true for me so I'm sacrificing my own security so I can be true to me and true to my own inner vision and my own wisdom and my own inner knowing my own inner compass my own intuitions my yeah what I need for me and so it has been hard like but I've been used to the, to playing the role of the black sheep in my family and so I'm not just going against just to go against just for the sake of going against or the sake of being unique or yeah any of that but like I know that that's a pattern as well and that's kind of how I can get in my own way and sabotage myself you know but um I did feel like yeah like uncomfortable and um but I was glad to be able to see them and be with them and to offer them some nourishment and some love and just what I was able to so I brought him some soup and some bone broth that I had made and some elderberry syrup that I had made um, on um, Friday and yeah just wanted to drop that off I was in the area and wanted to just see them both because I'd miss them but it's like I could tell like there was a part of me that wanted to protect me and so it was like a wall or some kind of barrier that slipped into place while I was still willing to be open and still willing to be open-minded, open-hearted. And there was a part of me that just didn't want to be there. And that's an old strategy. It's not wanting to be there. So checking out or shutting down in certain ways to protect myself. And like, yeah, just being aware of those things. But like, yeah, um, I know that it, I don't need to convince anyone of anything either, but it was just kind of like, in some certain ways, there was that old wound there that was activating an old belief that, yeah, I need to prove that I am worthy or something along those lines that goes along with that like not feeling I'm enough as I am and then like yeah there's the idealist there too as well like where I want things to be a certain way and it's kind of like maybe projecting onto them that they're not enough for me as they are because yeah in certain ways but really I know that they are and it's just like that part of me that really wants to be included and received and redeemed <laughs> yeah through external validation or approval but yeah that was what's going on so 
yeah, just like look, looking at those themes of dissolution and dissolving. Um, and that's hard to do, letting go, dissolving. It's like the butter in the chrys the butterfly, <laughs> the butterfly in the chrysalis, and uh, the chrysalis dissolving itself so it can become something new. And it, wow, it is pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> but yeah, it's so that life can continue <laughs> and renew. But um, it was hard just to be. I did my best and I did feel a little bit detached and distanced, maybe a bit defensive and closed off, but I did my best to listen and to share love and to let them be themselves. But I also wanted to assert myself and maybe my ego was at play and that's okay. Dissolving and becoming whole, whole it's okay not to know. Yeah, coming home, just choose love and let it go. I will love him and I will love all and thank him always, the good Mark the good-hearted man that he is. Dear Dad, I love you forever and always. And it's just that, yeah, it makes me sad in a lot of ways. Like the manipulation and the intimidation and the coercion and the mind control and like all of that. Like it just makes me really sad that um, people are and people that I love are buying into it and choosing to get a toxic medical treatment when it can cause much harm and that's and I'm just worried about that like but I just get to let that go as well and yeah it's just because I'm afraid of I'm gonna lose them but that's just like, yeah, an ego need for control. So I'm just ready to surrender it. Like I'm ready really to surrender all of it, surrender control. And so what I got to do was like, okay, love offerings and love letters, you know? And so um, a couple months ago when I was going through some old papers and some old junk and some old stuff that I'd held on to, and that was part of my cleanup process of spring cleaning, like, <laughs> not just my physical space, but everything. But that was part of it, like going down to my, um, my guest bedroom and cleaning out my closet that had like a bunch of old uh, sentimental things in it with a bunch of junk that I had saved. And going through certain things, I had found an old notebook um, for a, a course I had taken after I, um, was going through a divorce from my first husband and there was some really helpful exercises in there and it was like yeah um, something about how to navigate like or how to survive a, a broken relationship or some kind of thing like that and I'll have to dig that out again it was based on a book um, and I had gone through that and there was these exercises that we had done every week of writing exercises and one was a poisoned pen letter to help with like dumping just all of the all all of the shadow stuff onto the page just to release it and express it like certain things that we don't think are acceptable to express or um, to even feel or whatnot and uh, it was very therapeutic like to get all of that bile and that like burning like that acid like out like just to let it go and to release it so I didn't have to carry it around with me because I knew it would destroy me like in a lot of ways and um, so that did give me an idea of like okay like that might be a good exercise a poison pen letter like just a, a poison pen letter uh, <laughs> you know, to help me, like, allow everything that needed to be expressed to be expressed, and then to, to get down to the bones, the bones of it, and the root of the injury, and the root of the pain, and the root of the suffering, and the root of the disease. So, um, yeah, if we can allow ourselves to express ourselves, and to express 
these things that we've suppressed and repressed and oppressed, then our own wisdom can emerge like the remedy. So yeah, we, it's like we, we need to, to kind of express or let this poison kind of be expressed and so we can make the, or create or synthesize the remedy from that poison, from the poison itself. And so that's what I worked on like today. Um, didn't really plan on it, but that's just kind of what happened today. And um, I'll share a little bit about that. So I, there was a poison pen letter and a forgiveness letter. And so I did both. And so like, it is like in the fires of transformation, going through these fires, like in the cold, the cold fire and the, <laughs> yeah, that consumes us. And yeah, I, I think in, there was something about that. Um, yeah, I'll have to revisit and, or I'll see if it comes back up. And so, um, yeah, yesterday though, I have, yeah, let's keep, keep this fire theme. <laughs> just keeps coming and um, also like archetypal themes so my animal companions and my totems and my friends are helping me see certain things as well about certain energies and qualities that are available and accessible to work with and it's just so aligned with <laughs> with some of the things that I've been listening to and it's so cool I love it when that happens like writing down different things and about like certain certain things that have uh, certain energies and qualities and then hearing it from someone else and it just wow I just love like all the synchronicities and like the add and that um, bring more threads together to make a coherent uh, to make a coherent whole it was just amazing really to see it harder to articulate and explain <laughs> so but here's my poison pen letter that I wrote today and it is like some of it is pretty harsh but it's like I didn't hold back and I let it be expressed so that I can release it and I can do something else with it I can transform it and transmute it like yeah ready to surrender it really So it's, yeah, here we go, here, <laughs> here goes nothing. Okay, you dumbass motherfuckers. You don't want to grow your immature asses up and take responsibility for your own health, life, and well-being. You want an expert and a false authority to tell you what to do. This is part of the self-destructive, sacrificial lamb, master slave, scapegoat, hero, villain, monster, damsel in distress programming that you have agreed to. You have no care or no ability to think critically or challenge your established beliefs. Are they even your beliefs that have been inherited and printed and planted and formulated by external control and authority? Shit made up. All scripts for the domination, man manipulation and control system to siphon life force and psychic energy from you. They control you through fear, shame, guilt, pain, pride, greed, and vanity. All the lower ego distortions. And you're so blind to this BS programming that you're destroying yourself, life, and everyone around you. But you're told it's for the greater good and what you must do to be seen as good or enough and worthy. Worthy to exist and be a part of the group. That sanctioned, approved, and righteous and true. Hiding behind the golden calf of science or scientism to make you feel safe, right, and included. And the saddest thing about this is you haven't got a clue what's really been happening because you've been told not to, not to trust yourself, life, or the great unknown. Oh yeah, don't go down those rabbit holes, stay asleep and fear the boogeyman because we're here to save the day for you. And look at the fucking mess all around, or are you still blind to that as well? Cornholio visions, collateral damage, mental health crisis, isolation, suicide and depression, chronic conditions, toxicity, tyranny, overreach, dis displaced families and communities, dishonoring individual, dishonoring sovereignty. The divide and conquer strategies designed to destroy the family and the true pursuit of liberty, freedom, power and responsibility, sovereignty and accountability. You've traded your own life for security 
which is an illusion and a tragedy. I'm so sad that you didn't see that the snitch lines in the beginning of this freaking fraudulent mess were part of a social experiment to see who would choose the Third Reich theme, turning in neighbors, friends, strangers, and family members who would not comply with this draconian tyranny, this totalitarianism, the technocrats' wet dream. Operating from a place of fear and spiritual immaturity, it's really hard to see through or beyond our rigid beliefs and core wound anxieties. This is a form of mind control. They've mastered their fear-mongering, gaslighting, and manipulation techniques. What's the definition of a narcissist? Someone who demands submission to their whims, perceptions, programs, stories, views, beliefs, and ways of operating the one-way, self-serving street. Lower ego control. For taking and throwing all other choices and possibilities, individuality, rights, livelihood, free speech, support, belonging, emotional needs, and informed consent away and out the window. But hey, we're saving lives, right? Because mommy and daddy says so. Fuck, how stupid do you need to be to go along with this more than obvious tyranny? This sabotage and fuckery, deception and ego flattery. Wake the hell up or don't. Fuck your opinions, your fears and beliefs. Fuck your ego security. Fuck your stupid mask that does nothing but poison you with your own toxic waste and, your, and makes you feel so virtuous and safe. Fuck your medical mafia. Fuck your infantile stories. Fuck your groupthink mob mentality. Fuck your stupid face. Fuck your religion of scientism and your greater good tyranny. Fuck your stupid leaders and false authority. Fuck your self-righteousness and your gull gullibility. Fuck your arrogant asshole attitude and fuck your shut down brain. <laughs> fuck your ridiculous logic. Fuck your silly bullshit. Fuck your ignorance and your clownishness. Fuck your naive belief that the government's here to save you. Fuck your compliance and your cowardice. Fuck your rigid ego-driven system. Fuck your comfort and your comfort zones. Fuck your desire to please your masters and receive their stamp of validity and approval. Fuck your self-made suffering and your projections of blame and hatred. Fuck your bubble of false reality. Fuck your stupid ass, Cornholio. <laughs> so, yeah, that was good therapy. So it seems I'm most angry about the manipulation, deceit, tyrannical overreach overreach and rigid beliefs that do not honor life's fullness or our legit right to be, our legit right to be free. And the belief that we need to sacrifice ourselves as a martyr or a sacrificial lamb to be worthy to exist here. And the belief that there is such a thing as a benevolent dictator. The belief in the supposed legitimacy of an external authority that is righteous, moral, and proper, that uses force and coercion, intimidation, violence, and harm. Oh, it's wrong to kill, hurt, and maim people? Oh, yep, except when it's the government, or just our militarized armed forces, or Big Pharma. Because, well, that's just democracy. Oh, really? Oh, really? Nice logic and unfaulty reasoning. Groupthink, mob mentality, cancel culture, virtuous victims, and self-righteous heroes. Deep in your delusions of we are civilized, and we are in the right, and we are educated, and we are superior. Arrogant assholes, sheesh. Close-minded, rigid, shut down, hijacked hearts and minds, fear, hate, guilt, and shame, pride, envy, greed, and vanity. Wake up and smell the bullshit, please. I release the need to please and convince you of anything, including my own legitimacy. I forgive you for your limitations and weaknesses and shortcomings. I release you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I release you. I forgive me. I release me. I release me. I forgive me. I forgive all, I release all, I release all, I forgive all. I release this whole situation, I release the outcome. I release the past, I release myself from my own suffering. I release myself from these old attachments. I release and surrender it all to the angels. I release and surrender it all to creator. I release all and bless all. I surrender to the great mystery with love, compassion, and grace, trust, faith, and strength. I am safe. It is safe for me to express myself. It is safe for me to relax and trust myself. I am safe, I am supported, I am held, and I am well. I am loved, I belong here. I love and approve of myself. I am safe, I am loved, all is well, so be well. So that was my poisoned pen letter and part of my, or the beginning of my forgiveness letter. And 
So what I could see about that, like, was a lot of things that I was so angry at myself for, um, for selling myself short and for compromising myself for security, for belonging, for approval, for someone to see me as worthy and someone to see me as right. And so that's why I'm so very like angry, like, but plus, I mean, not to mention that like all the suffering that it perpetuates, you know, So here's my forgiveness letter for what I started, and I'm sure I'll continue it. <laughs> I'm sorry that you are so afraid. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I'm sorry that you are unwell and insecure. I forgive you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry that you don't trust yourself. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry they have lied, fear-mongered, manipulated, and betrayed you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry you're so confused. I'm sorry you're so toxic. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I'm sorry you've chosen tyranny for some sense of stability. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry you are suffering. I'm sorry you are lost and forgetting that your body is an intelligent self-regulating system. I'm sorry you've been poisoned, brainwashed, and manipulated. I'm sorry you're wounded and traumatized. I'm sorry you're being used. I'm sorry I love you and I forgive you. So that's my start of my forgiveness letter. And yeah, it does go along with like some of the Pisces energy that was coming up. Um, I was, yeah, wanting to share a little bit about that um, because it relates and um, I thought it was super interesting. So the mind, the Piscean mind, this is from the Astrology Bible by Judy Hall. The Piscean mind is irrational and intuitive or illusory and deceptive. Allowed to flow where it will, it may enter the realms of the mystical and transcendent. Pisces seeks union with the divine and plugged into universal energies can access sources of information beyond the norm. Pisces can achieve a mind meld with another person that allows him or her to know exactly how it feels to stand in another's shoes. For Pisces, emotion... Oh, this is about emotions. For Pisces, emotions underpins virtually everything in life. It is a fluid personality that reacts to any emotional stimulus without discrimination. Inner currents of feeling tug Pisces first this way, then that. Most Pisces have no idea what they actually feel because they so easily absorb other people's feelings and psychic impressions. Pisces is a soft touch easily pulled in by tales of another's misfortune. No other sign is as prone to guilt as this one. Exercising self-blame and flagellation, Pisces wallows in an anxiety created by the thought of all those who suffer and all those who whom Pisces lets down. That's a big one. So yeah, disappointments. Afraid of disappointing others and wanting yeah, the other to be happy and feeling deep sadness and sorrow in my own suffering if I if there are others that are suffering, others that I love and care about that are suffering. So I never really know how to, to, how to how to differentiate that or just to hold space for that and have compassion for that without taking it on and absorbing it. So it has been a lot of letting go of what's not mine to carry and also like sorting things out of what's mine and what's not mine. So it's been a challenge. It's been a good challenge and an opportunity for huge growth and expansion and self-realization and self-liberation. I'm grateful for that. And I am grateful for the reflection to help me know who I am, to help me understand and to help me bring light <laughs> to what's ready to 
be illuminated and be transformed and transmuted, released or integrated. Strengths. When Pisces is at his or her best, it is the most intuitive and empathetic sign of the zodiac with the vast imaginative and compassionate resource. Weaknesses. Pisces finds handling the harsh realities of the world very difficult. When confusion sets in, this manipulative character finds it difficult to distinguish truth from reality and reneges on promises. Shadow. The Piscean shadow is a martyr who feels put upon and used. This persona is created by an inability to discern when it is inappropriate to go on giving and to stop doing everything for someone else. A major feature of the Piscean shadow is guilt and a consequent drive to atonement and self-immolation. Karma. Karma in the Piscean sphere centers around the science tendency to play the savior or the victim, taking on atonement rather than at one minute. The karmic challenge is to learn to empathize without taking on someone else's pain. Likes. Anything romantic, artistic, and mystical. Music, theater, and the arts. The sea. Healing is often associated with Pisces. Dislikes. Detail. Time constraints. Reality. Telling the truth when it's going to hurt someone. As a parent, the Piscean parent sees offspring as an extension of him or herself without recognizing that a child's experience of life is different. This is a sensitive and caring parental model which provides artistic stimulation and opportunities for play but does not encourage individuality. Discipline is difficult for Pisces and boundaries have a habit of shifting, making life challenging for any child who does not belong to an empathetic water sign. Children may also feel overwhelmed by such an emotional style of parenting. So, yeah, there are some things that really do resonate there. And, uh, yeah, I have learned a lot. And if I had to do it all over again, like, obviously I, I learned so much. But now if I was having another child, I would do it completely different. <laughs> Although I did my best and I loved my child, my children with all that I had, with all that I am. I can see how like some of the, um, how um, my emotional needs were kind of projected onto, yeah, especially my daughter. And uh, yeah, those around me. So as a child, the Pisces child is a natural daydreamer. This active mind thrives in an artistic and imaginative educational environment, which disciplines gently. I didn't receive that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for <laughs> the beginning of my life I did, but like, yeah, when I could have used it later on in my adolescence and <laughs> teenage years, uh, it wasn't gentle. Since this is a soft-hearted child who cries easily and cannot bear pain no matter whose it is, <laughs> that's me. And an inharmonious atmosphere can cause great upset. Career. This sign is happy in an artistic role such as an actor, dancer, artist, poet, fantasy writer, photographer, animator. A propensity to addictive behavior can be worked out positively as a drug or alcohol counselor, hypnotherapist, or psychiatrist, nurse, or doctor. Pisces enjoys the mystical side of life, so priest, intuitive healer, tarot reader, astrologer, or illusionist are all appropriate occupations. <laughs> so... Pisces. The science connection to feet make Pisces an excellent uh, chiropodist or podiatrist links to the sea suggest a cruise organizer, sailor, or a fishmonger. Leisure activities. Anything to do with water suits Pisces, so swimming, sailing, fishing, or, <laughs> or cruising are ideal. As an artistic character, Pisces also enjoys writing, poetry, ballet, acting, theater, photography, and watercolor painting. Other suitable activities include yoga, dance, and solitary walking. This sign is often a film buff. Most Pisceans enjoy metaphysics, romantic dinners, and magic of all kinds. And I thought that was kind of fun. So Pisces, traditional correspondences are early spring. The day is Thursday. The number is seven. The physiology, feet, lymphatic system, pituitary gland. And um, birthstone is amethyst or moonstone. Crystals, bloodstone, aquamarine, beryl, blue lace, ag agate, calcium calcite, fluorite, labradite, turquoise, smithsonite, and sunstone. Associations, drama, and addiction. 
Uh, the metal is tin. The colors are soft sea green, pure white, mauve, purple, violet, and silver. Animals are fish, dolphins, and all sea mammals. So, yeah, there's a little bit about Pisces there. Pisces, the glyph, the symbol for the sign is two fishes swim in opposite directions while tied together at the center to represent the vacillating fluid nature of Pisces. The dates are the 19th of February through the 19th of March. The ruler of Pisces is Jupiter and Neptune. And um, the element is water. The quality is mutable. The polarity is negative. Keywords for Pisces are compassionate, impressionable, receptive, vacillation, imagination, malleable, mysticism, transcendent, union, dreamer, confusion, elusive, and self-effacing. So, the personality of Pisces. The Pisces personality is typically vague and lacking in focus. Possessing permeable boundaries, Pisces is not sure where self ends and someone else begins. This personality acts like a psychic sponge, picking up feelings and impressions from all around. Whilst gentle Pisces would not willingly hurt anyone, this unassertive personality finds it difficult to say no. Pisces often casts itself as a victim and excels at passive-aggressive behavior. Rather than displease someone overtly, this personality will take on tasks with no intention of fulfilling them, or make promises lightly only to break them almost immediately, like the fishes of the glyph Pisces gets pulled in two directions at once. One side of this personality is kindness personified, the other is passively manipulative. Wavering between the two, it is no wonder Pisces has difficulty dealing with everyday reality. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting, like kind of seeing how like that part or that aspect um, in my chart like is a huge influence and um, part of what I'm here to learn and to integrate and uh, to harmonize. Yeah. And recreate, regenerate with it um, so that it works for me and not against me. And so, yeah, that's some, some good uh, potency right there for my alchemy. And like just getting to know myself, like, okay, like I can see those things and yeah, like I can claim it all. So I can claim all of it for me, like not just the parts that I like, um, because like the parts that are a little more challenging or maybe that I've been taught or to believe not to like or um, to reject in myself, that is like where some of my power is um, that I get to develop my strengths and my potential with and through like those weaknesses or those limitations and so there's i just got out a couple of different um old affirmations before i started this video and um i didn't know why actually but <laughs> now i know why so if i'm not claiming all my power then i'm giving it away so i claim my sparkle i claim my shine i claim my shitty it's all mine no need to fix, pretend, or defend. Just allow me to be all that I am. Be open to receiving all that I am. To receive me, receiving all that I am. Yeah. And I'm sorry I didn't know how to be with you. Please forgive me. I welcome you, I love you, and I thank you. I love you, I honor you. Let me escort you back into the light. Welcome home. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love me and I'm sorry. I forgive me. I release you. I am a blessing to the world. I am full of beauty, ravishing, astounding beauty. I delight the universe. My presence brings joy. I offer authentic gifts of love to everyone in my life. I am a blessing to this world. Yeah, now I think we've gone over an hour now, and that's so easy for me to do. But thanks for being here, and thanks for listening. And uh, I'm going to continue with part two. I have a couple of different things to add to like this work that I've been working through. And I also have, yeah, that story about the handless maiden that I read yesterday. Um, I'm just blown away by it. 
All right, be well, be love for yourselves. Take care of yourselves. See you for now.